Greetings everybody, it's Jim again, and now we got a little quick tutorial about how to import your own things into the Fantasy Trip. It's really not hard, so let's get right into it. Let's go to music, and uh, we hit music, and we just go to this bar here, and we name what this uh, folder is going to be. Oh, fantasy music, not fantasy folder, even though that would have been accurate. We go to the browse local files, find the music that we want to put in there, select it, now this is important. You're always going to want to pick cloud. Doing it local is like for when you're offline, if the internet is down or something like that, and, or if you want to load something a mite faster, it's you're going to see it's not that big of a deal to load it to the cloud. But and you should get into the habit because if you don't, you're not going to your friends aren't going to see it. So what's the point, right? So load it to the cloud, upload it, wait for that circle to go away, import it, bam, we got music. All right. So, simple enough. Let's go to the next step. Let's talk about these character, uh, little characters here, our counters. Now, what you could do with the hard way is to go to objects, components, and of course here you have your blocks, your boards, dice. Um, these are the generic things that Tabletop Simulator has for you. Well, uh, you, go to, you could go to custom, and then go to tile, and then load one up this way, and then have all the settings and do what you want. Which is fine, you can make your own hexes in its pre-configured uh, settings, and that's fine. Nothing really wrong with that. But since I already have the, the thickness set up and everything, you could just p click it, copy and paste it in. All right, right click, go to custom, and here's everything all set. Uh, go to top image, the bottom image is the skull, you don't want to mess with that, unless you want to mess with that. <laughs> and then you go to browse local files, you find the counter you want to use, select it, hit cloud, upload it, wait for that to go away, bam, Bob's your uncle. There he is, and your uncle's a Myrmidon. Okay, so now that that's taken care of, let's go to a character sheet. How do we change these? Now, I'm going to put the Photoshop file on the in the description. I'm going to have it be able to download it so you can edit it yourself um, with Photoshop, GIMP, or maybe even a PDF file. I'll put a PDF file up there as well. Um, whatever your level of uh, you know technical savvy goes. But to do these, it's the same thing. You go to custom, you change the browser local file, you find your, your um, character sheet file for it, hit select, cloud, upload it, wait for the circle to go away, import, bam, there it is. All right, your typical Myrmidon. All right, so simple as that. Now, let's go to something a little bit trickier. Uh, we're going to go to two of the uh, two of the weird shaped ones, um, and the reason this is important is because well, let me see. I think the wolves may may be the same. Yeah, the wolf is the same thing. You can actually change them up. Uh, you're you're oh by the way, uh, you're when you're making these files, uh, the characters are two hundred. I mean, I'm sorry, one twenty by one twenty. The wolf-sized ones are 120 by 60, and these uh, giants, if you want a big creature in there, is 200 by 200. And uh, you really got to make sure you fix them into a triangle in there and make a transparency. That's going to take some uh, a little bit of knowledge of editing software, okay? So just keep that in mind. Now, but these are a little bit different because these are actually, because you're using a transparency, because they don't, you know, because this is a big triangle. If these counters had a triangle for type, you wouldn't need. We wouldn't need to do this, but we have to here. So we just go to custom, and we we find. Uh, as you can see, it's a little different. It's a, it's a little different here. There's no back. The back side for these is the same. They don't. It's not. I don't know what the real difference is too much, um, but I don't care. Let's say, and then I pick my own. I got my own old school giant here, and I load it up. Wait for the circle to go away, hit import, and bam, now I got a giant. Now that's a little, a little bit cropped up there. I got to check that file perhaps. Um, but that's how you can do that. And that is basically importing things uh, in, in the fantasy trip. Really not difficult. Uh, and you can just uh, do all kinds of things. And working with transparencies is probably the toughest part of it. Now let's uh, let's go. With, let's say you have something you want to uh, make an infinity bag or put things in bags. All right. So let's go to uh, components, and we go to tools, and here we got we hit infinity bag. We just left click on it, and one shows up. 
Then we hit bag, and one shows up with that. <laughs> and it went right, it went into the infinity bag. So now I have an infinity bag of bags. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Okay, let's start this again. Oh, all right. Let's get rid of the infinity bags. An infinity bag of bags. In bag of bags. Don't they have that as an item on Steve Jackson games? <laughs> bag of bags. All right. So you can actually have that here. I <laughs> wonder if I have to get Steve's permission to put that in here. <laughs> okay, anyway. Let's uh, go do this again. Uh, objects. Okay. Go to tools. Infinity bag. Let's just do this first and move this out of the way so we can drop the other one in. And of course, as you can imagine, the uh, difference between an infinity bag and a normal bag is the normal bag is just where you put normal stuff in. So basically, um, you can title it and everything. Let's say I want to put all these four away. Just hover over it. Oof, they all take in. And then you could just search, and there they all are. And it's as simple as that. And uh, if you right-click on it, you can actually name it. Say, bag of stuff. And there you go, bag of stuff. And it says how many things are in it. Now, on the opposite end, let's say uh, our favorite three-letter mongrel, Ulf, we can't get enough of the guy. We put him in the infinity bag, and as soon as you do that, now it's clones. If you ever play the old game Paranoia, there you go, send in the clones. There you go. All right, it just keeps on going. Hey, everybody, I almost forgot something. Uh, we definitely want to look up... Uh, look up how to save files right of course we do you you all the work you want to save it and loading it's one thing uh, so what we want to do is we want to go to games and we want to go to save and load and then we can create a file and just uh, save it as a fantasy trip and there it is all right and it'll, it'll show up fantasy trip we'll call it fantasy trip new there we go, and now that we come back to the, the title, the, the, I mean, not the title screen, but back here, there it is, Fantasy Trip New. And if we ever want to up, up, overwrite it, we could just hit overwrite, and it'll save whatever you've got now. You might want to save it under a different title, as of course you don't want to, if you make any mistakes, it could be detrimental, just like any other kind of save file. You want to have maybe multiple copies and such. Now, when it comes to uh, having people play your game, let's go to the main menu here, and... What we do is we go to create multiplayer and then you make a server name, and then you make a server password, and you say how many players can join in, and then of course your your friends can just join in. All they've got to do once you create the server is hit join and all the server names will come up. You double click one and then it says enter the server password and they just pop right in. And it's as simple as that. So thanks a lot and I'll see you next video.